Alrighty, Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday. Hooray for us. Alright, what do we got going on today? I mean, I looked at, like, I'm looking at the, uh, the Swiss, and I was like, and I was looking at the Euro. The only one I saw any strength in today so far has been, like, the cable, uh, you know, against the dollar. Everybody else seems to be uh, losing it, which is kind of odd. But that's the way it's rolling. And you can see over, let's see, where is it at? Let's put it up on the Chicago Quant at the same time, right there. Let's uh, switch that over, like right there. Hey, you can see, you know, just moving up. Same thing over here on the J4X, seeing strength. You know, it's uh, curious uh, in, in some ways. We are so, the financial markets globally, and in the United States and in general are so far off the natural course of the last few thousand years. Okay? That's a big number, you know, a few thousand years. But you can say for sure, since the Magna Carta and, you know, the London Stock Exchange, we are way off course, even if you just want to say three, four hundred years. Uh, things are really weird. You know, I mean, these are the strangest things we've ever seen. And it doesn't seem to want to stop. You know, it just, uh, it, it, as much as the logic tells us, the, you know, the concept tells us, you know, the, 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 our instincts tell us. You know, I was reading an option volume today, globally and domestically. And, you know, they're, they're out there trading really short-term options, you know, breaking records. I always say that in a webinar here when we do talk about binaries and options. They do consistently break records. You know, I mean, that's one of the only places it's really growing more than anything else. Um, it, it it's there's not much more to be said about how odd times are. They're just odd. I mean, they are just odd. That's what they are. All right. Uh, so you can see here the dollar is stronger against the uh, Swiss, which you know I thought we were heading for the bottom end of that range right here. Instead, all of a sudden, it just shifts gears and heads north again. You know, lack of confidence in, uh, or let's put it this way, a flight to safety to the dollar. That seems to be the action we're seeing there. And you can see it here, you know, the strength kicking up on J4X, and it doesn't seem to want to go away. I mean, as much as we are the problem, I guess, you know, when you really think, if you want to go esoteric, you know, when you, like, theoretical finance, you know, if they had only allowed the quantitative easing to last a short period of time, calmed everybody down, allowed Lloyds of London and, you know, Merrill Lynch and all those, okay, they, they forced them into marriages, you know, they forced them into these being purchased. Lehman, Lehman Brothers was one of the only ones that actually went out of, out of business itself. Um, if they had allowed Santander and, you know, uh, Barclays and you know all of them allowed Deutsche Bank they couldn't they were so leveraged they would, they had allowed them all to become so leveraged that they needed to calm down the global pa uh, uh, panic of the financial markets and the destruction of the, the financial markets in 2008 um, Mr. Obama welcomed in a new era of just crazy you know, financial crazy, and we're still there since 2008, you know, and uh, I'm not sure if anything's better or worse when it comes to, we know that Citibank has, you know, reduced its its risk, we know that Deutsche, Deutsche Bank has enormously reduced its risk, they've, they've, they've been slowly unwinding all the leveraged risk that they were allowed to, to uh, incorporate over the years. Can you imagine Deutsche Bank? had $79 trillion, not billion, not million, trillion, 79 trillion, I think maybe I'm wrong, I think it was 73 trillion, 73 trillion in uh, swaps and loans and, you know, offsets and hedges, 73 trillion, the German economy is only like a $4 trillion economy, and, the, and they allow these banks to just grow like that and not slow them down or force them to break up. And that's why for years you would hear that uh, they were trying to get uh, Commerce Bank of Germany merged with Deutsche Bank. 
And hey, how you doing, Jordan? TGIF to you too. Thank goodness it's Friday, eh? And so, you know, we're I'm just going through this litany because we're now at a point now. I, I was reading this morning and last night the records that are being broken in the options market, and a lot of it looks like binary. It really does. It has that look to it because they're 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 doing lots of rolls and they're doing uh, in the monies and out of the monies and things like that. And you know, you just scratch your head at uh, the, uh, the 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 dilemma. It's a dilemma, you know, that the, the financial markets are still in since 2008. And and they just, now the, now the government is doing like the last of it. They're trying to, you know, with this pandemic thing, uh, that's what I like to call the thing. Who knows exactly what it is exactly. But in the end result is that it has forced um, economies to be even more uh, flagrant. You know, uh, not diligent, you know, irresponsible. I, I would say that's the best way to describe it. The amount of money they're spending. So, all right, let's get rolling along. I'm done beating up on the financial system at this point. Uh, that's what happens when you read theoretical physics, uh, not theoretical, theoretical option trading, implied volatilities versus uh, uh, a real volatility and, you know, the, the amount of volume. They're trading in the billions of dollars worth of, of these options now when it comes to stocks, you know, what the underlying option represents. All right, let's take a look at the euro this morning, right there on J4X. You can see it's been just moving down. Let's see over here on Chicago Quant how it looks this morning. See, well, it's unchanged the flat the up a little bit right there, really. So Hinky, you got all this red here on the Chicago Quant. Let's see if we can emphasize a little bit more here. You see, see all this red, you know, moving down. The red dots. And you see the same thing here on the the, uh, the uh, J4X. Same pressure on it. And uh, you know, you see, you know, we're pushing down. We are well below the range at this point. They they've. Uh, they seem to be wiping out the range or resetting a range or doing something. But either way, it is, it, there is not a lot of buyers coming in on this. Hmm. All right. Um, over on the cable, on the other hand, I see more buying going on. At least I did this morning. Yeah, see, it's, uh, it's lifting up even more. But still in a daily sell and a weekly sell. You know, the pressure is on. Put it over on J4X. We get it? Now we got the yen. There we are. And so that's lifting up. We don't really have a solid range. We've, we've had a top end of our, a resistance area. When we look at the uh, cable, I'll show it to you here. We oh, have to do a res, re, uh, spin thing. Where's that spinny thing? Right there. There we go. Uh, the top of the range has been very clear, but the and then we even have the, the Fibonacci set to it. But the uh, bottom end of the range has been kind of nebulous. I mean, we got this low here. Um, you know, for a long while it was this part of the range right there in the uh, 36 area. We watched for a couple of years where we were waiting for it to break out the 36, and it didn't. We saw it go back up into the 40s. Almost where Brexit, Brexit really started in the 40s and the 50s, you know, and uh, so they almost basically brought it back and have banged against that resistance area uh, for the last year. And uh, we thought that it was finally over with when they finally resolved the, the, uh, the Brexit, but the pandemic really put a, put a pressure you know, pressure point onto this marketplace itself. And you can see here, uh, now we are at the bottom end of the range. Uh, you know, we're at the 2-3. You can see, we've talked about this 2-3 where we figured it would rotate around it for a while, just like it did right here. You can see it there, it's dropped, you know, it hit it, bounced up, went to the uh, 0.38. Now it's dropped through the 0.23, and now it's trying to climb back up through it again. And you can see all that red on the uh, the J4X there, and you can see the lines. 
you see the lines there and the pressure. And this will start to pick up. This hinky ashy will start to adjust over the next couple hours. It'll start to go green. And that's, you know, because you can see it here, it's, it's moving up. You know, they're showing that strength here. You got a little bounce going on. You know, just like right here in J4X, it'll start to do the bounce. It'll start to get this again. And that is the cable. All right. Now, from there, what we do is we dance our way over to the uh, Turkish Lira. We follow the Turkish Lira, and we mention this every day. We follow it in two forms. We watch it through the dollar versus Turkish Lira, which is less insightful. I think that's the best way to describe it, just less insightful. And then we look at it through the Euro. And then, then we look at the... Uh, then we look at the Turkish lira through the euro, and that's the one where I say location, location, location. You know, uh, you know, there must be a lot more trade going on. There must be, you know, real texture to the action. Looks like we may have made a new high today. I don't think so. The high is nine. Oh, maybe it is ninety-eight. So nine ninety-eight, almost ten. And yesterday the high was uh, nine ninety-seven. So we made a little new high and. Backed off. You can see we've been in a daily buy for days. Matter of fact, you see from here on the euro Turkish lira, it, that's where it went into a buy and has not come out. It still stays in it. And they both are in the weekly buy, same amount of time. You know, way back here in the uh, so was that the early September, and here we are uh, early November or mid November. So it's been two solid months. This thing has been just climbing up, up and away. And then let's take a look at it through the euro, which is, like I said, it's much more accurate. And it is definitely the better trade. And there it is right there. See, it's going into the daily buy here, and it has not given up. It just keeps on rolling along much longer. Same date on the, uh, on the weekly right there from the uh, 10 area. And now we are at the 11 and a half area. And uh, there's that high there uh, at... Uh, 11.47, and uh, we made a new high at, uh, no, we didn't make a new high. There's 11.45, so it can't seem to be, uh, can't take out that high at the moment. And uh, yes, today is, we're looking at 11.42, it was 43. So we're not really seeing, uh, um, you know, a, a real panicky push, which says to me it's probably more liquid. You know, uh, you know the fact that, you know, where you see the dollar Turkish there, you know, makes new highs. And then it falls back. This thing, you know, there's probably more liquidity because, again, location, location, location. You know, I mean, Europe is adjacent to Turkey, so, I mean, they're just a border country. Uh, at some point, they were going to join NATO. Not NATO, I'm sorry, they're in NATO. They were going to join the, the EU, but they just couldn't get away from that. Uh, I guess there were issues. And they just couldn't break away from them. And so as time went on, it slowly disappeared and now we're at a point now where it is not um, they seem to be parked on the shelf they're not they're not involved in it at the moment about joining the uh, European Union um, I guess maybe there's another thing there about you know we don't we don't talk about it we, we I always insinuate that uh, president former uh, Prime Minister Aragon, was, is devaluing the currency, and um, you know he's been involved with them for a long while now, and the currency's gone from one and a half to, you know, in this case here, to eleven and a half, and so maybe the the devalue. De I always assume the devaluation is for bringing in new capital, but maybe it may be more geared towards joining the EU. In other words, they want to set this set it at such a low point. That it won't influence the uh, European Union as much, you know, you know the the, uh, the Turkish lira itself. You know, so that that could be a reason why we see the Turkish lira moving from one and a half under Aragon to eleven and a half. They may be devaluing it, devaluing it to adjust to go into the Euro, uh, the European Union. That's a possibility. I never thought about it that way until just now. All right, now where else do we go from here? Let's take a look at 
the Canadian. Oh, we didn't take a look at it on uh, J4X. I just want to see what it looks like on J4X. Oh, yeah. And the answer to that is right there. Lots of strength there. Up, up, and away. Let's have a sip of my tea here. <laughs> So here's a Canadian, a uh, little surprise again, you know, I mean, we see strong gold, we see strong silver, we see a solid oil market, even with it in a daily sell at the moment. Um, but here we have the Canadian moving back up. And what, you know, it wasn't until like about a week and a half ago that I realized that the election finally had happened, and it basically was no real clear conclusion, it was still st stuck in the same situation as they were before. Trudeau, I believe, instigated the new election, hoping to get some power, uh, more power, and at this point he did not. Um, he doesn't have a majority control, and so I guess it's he's a prime minister with a minority government. It's one of those really odd situations. So um, it, it really, uh, I guess, uh, you know, they don't, they're pushing it back up again, I guess, you know, because... Uh, Hope is eternal, and they realize that it's not going to change. And I guess that's the real problem right there. Is, you know, the economic policies are just going to stay the same, which obviously is not as positive. And you can see here we're going to go into a weekly buy right there. Let's just take a look at it on J4X. I bet we're two green candles into it at this point. Right there. And let's see what the weekly looks like. Right there. Yeah, second green candle. So uh, showing that, that there's more buyers than there are sellers. You can see here it busting through the line. And uh, that that is a somewhat of a, a, a teeny weeny little surprise. You know, we really think that. You know, it should be going the other way because of the way metals and uh, energies are, and they're very well endowed in that area. They have both. They have, you know, second largest silver producer maybe in the world. You know, at times they can be number one, two, or three in gold. Uh, I think sometimes they can be number one in silver, depending on you know issues. And at the same time, they, uh, you know, per capita, you know, in population, they produce. Two and a half, three million barrels a day. It's a lot for a country that has like 36 or 40 million people or something like that. All right, let's jump over to uh, the metals complex. We're going to take a look at gold to see how that's going. You know what? I want to see energy first. Let me, let's take a look at the crude oil. So you can see here we went into a daily sell in crude last couple days. You see here on uh, the J4X we have red for the last couple days and you see the white line piercing down. And so we're here we're uh, two full days in a cell going on a third day now. And we are in the weekly cell. That's the June contract so we're looking way out there. We have a plan looking at that. Here's the December contract. And it just missed the weekly sell last week. And you know, but it, now it's in a daily sell and closing in on the weekly sell the front month. So the pressure is on the uh, energy complex there. Let's take a look at the metals complex. And there is gold. Backing off a little bit today, you see my lines here are dropping down also. And, uh, so I don't know, that doesn't look right. I don't. Let me just double check that. that uh, there. I just uh, loaded it and I want to see if, was it that dead yesterday? I didn't think gold was that dead. And metals and 
called and deck. Yeah, so the opening was much lower and the high. Actually, it was an inside day. It was an inside day. We'll have to clean that up. But right now, that's not anything bad. You know, it's it's correct in the sense of the strength is still there. We're just down a little bit for the day. We have a settlement of uh, where's that close at? 63.90. I think that's correct. Yeah, that's the that's a correct close, and right now we're trading at uh, forty-seven fifty. So putting a little pressure on there. Oh no, no, wait a minute, I'm wrong. We're trading in fifties now. Just give it a reload. There you go. That makes more sense. Yeah, and we're trading at fifty-five, so we're only eight dollars off. Uh, you know, it's going to stay in the weekly buy. It's going to stay in the daily. You know, buy with all this action, so not worried about it too much. You can see it is playing with the time manifold there. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. <laughs> Let's jump over to so, uh, the. Let's see, we looked at the two. We can go back to the currencies, clean up the currencies, and then from there we can go back to the metals complex and we'll explore the rest of them. But I'm just going to take a quick, teeny weeny little peek of silver. So silver is doing the same thing, it's showing just a little, just a little weakness, nothing major. Yeah, it seems to be holding up. And it's going to be a full four weeks in a buy, heading for a fifth, it looks like. And you can see we've been in a daily buy for. Uh, uh, six full days so not bad I guess you could say is it's nice to see the metals join in when we have all the screaming and yelling about the inflation I mean really you can't can't have a down market in metals when you have inflation jumping in your face and saying hi I'm here <laughs> hi I'm inflation and I'm here to take your assets All right, let's jump over to the currencies again. And we'll leave silver there because we'll, we'll initiate right to silver once we're done with all the currencies. All right, let's take a look at the South African Rand, which we keep on thinking the product should be going down. I mean, the metals are going up in value, so why aren't they going down? End of the year noise? I don't know, I don't have a strong opinion about it. The, the, the strongest opinion I have is it normally is going. At least it seemed like it was that was what it was doing up until recently, until Zuma and his issues started to kick out. Former president of South Africa, President Zuma, or former president Zuma, that's I guess the way to describe it. All right, good. They're trying to press it down a little bit, but you can see here we're in a weekly buy, and it doesn't look like it's going to go challenge. Uh, we're going to be seven full weeks in a weekly buy, and at the same time, you can see a couple days here in daily buys, but have only gone sideways to down from that daily buy signal. So it's a loser, loser chicken dinner. You give up a, you give up some wings and some thighs and some breast, and you give it all up, even the coleslaw. All right, over to the ruble. Now the ruble. You know, went into a daily buy yesterday right there, and you can see it's going on the second day and moving up. And we flirted our way after 13 weeks in a weekly sell. Since back up in here, we went into the weekly sell. You know, it's gone all the way down to there, and now we are finally battling our way into the weekly buy. Looks like it'll definitely close on a weekly buy there. I'm about to just throw the cute little line in there now. I can always erase it at the end of the day if it doesn't do what it's doing now. Let's save that. And that's pretty much the action in, in the uh, ruble. Let's tighten that up. I want to get a better flavor for it. You know, it does have a downwardly slope at least. That's the positive thing. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a big 
fan of the ruble in the sense that I think that it is undervalued. I think it should be down in the high 30s, you know, or mid 40s. But I really have a hard time imagining it up here in the 70s. But it's there. You gotta face reality. I guess that's what it is. Now let's jump over to the yen. And there's the yen. And the yen has been in a daily buy for a few days. This is the third day. And we've been in a weekly buy since down in here. So the trend has been up. And, uh, but there's not a lot of conviction to any of this stuff at this point in time. Yeah, the conviction to the the whole sector itself, you know, the sense of it seems like the dollar has the strength and everybody is following. And then we jump over to the Mexican peso. Right there. And it's bouncing up in a daily buy for a couple days here. Uh, it looked like we were going to try to get into the weekly buy at one point. Um, unless they make a run for it, it's, it's going to be a second weekend of sell, so we're going to be stuck in daily buy for three days and a weekly sell for one week. So it's keeping you out of this tr trade, basically. I don't know how much more room it has on the upside. None of it seems to you know, give us any solid confidence that there's much action to be read. Let's see, Douglas says, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you. Let's see, and Jordan says, got that book by John Murphy. Oh, did you? You recommended currently reading Harmonic Trading by Scott Carey. Might have to read his books twice through to remember all of it. I hear you. You know, I mean, you know, I, I'd done that, you know, when I was young. I read, I read things whole week. I remember reading the option book in one week and then going back and reading it again uh, over a three day period again, just reading it over and over again, just getting the flavor to it all. And, uh, and the technical analysis, the good thing is with Murphy's book, you're able to go back and look, you'll, you'll see if you read it slow and steady and just keep on looking through it and getting, you know, like fresh eyes on it in a sense, you know, and repeating yourself with it. Uh, after a while, you'll recognize patterns, and then those patterns, you can you got the book there. It's not like you're taking a test or something, and so you know you'll be able to open up the book and take a look and have a, a better understanding of what you may be looking at and what to look for from that pattern. Uh, but John Murphy was a, a great market technician, and uh, you know, he I remember when he joined the Financial News Network, which merged with CNBC. And, uh, you know, it was just a, he was, he was really a, a, a really good market technician in an era where market technicians were laughed at. They used to refer to him as voodoo. <laughs> I remember that. <clears throat> they used to say that market technical analysis is voodoo. There used to be a TV show which was infamous. It was called Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser, an old, an old financial family. And, uh, and, and of, a, 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 I guess, financial journalist, you know, for over 100 years. And his father had been a, a financial analyst, uh, you know, a, 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 not an analyst, a financial uh, uh, editor of uh, news, you know, for, you know, some major institution when, when newspapers were real. And in the end result is that uh, Louis Rukeyser, <coughs> he had... You know, uh, a TV show that was number one financial TV show on every week on Friday. It was called Wall Street Week, and everybody tuned it in and watched it like, like uh, you know, like ants or like bees on honey. I mean, we all watched it, you know, for decades. I would record it so I could watch it a second time. Back then, there was no, you know, way of seeing these things, so you had to, you, know, you had to. VCR or something like that to record this stuff in the 70s and the 80s, that type of thing. Anyway, uh, he used to refer to market technicians as the elves. <laughs> That's what he referred to them as. It was bad enough that they, they referred to it as voodoo, but they also referred to them like as if we were little elves, you know, doing technical analysis. Hey, middle age, how you doing? What do we got here? 
Uh, Aussie dollar. Sure, let's see what the Aussie dollar looks like. I think it went into a, it's still in, in the cell maybe? On a daily basis. Oh, you can't see the fact check spreadsheet. I just realized that. And so there it is. Yeah, it's been in the cell for the last couple weeks. And it looks like it's piercing the weekly cell finally. See that there? It's a minus. Well, that's the uh, the super. The five is, is minus. And right now you can see that uh, plot one is also minus. Minus 0 0.ZZZ19, which was just 20. So, or 0, 0, 0. So you can see there, it's flirting with the weekly cell. Um, yes, right there. So it's been four weeks in a buy and eight days in a sell. This will be the ninth day. And it doesn't look like it's going to pop back up. And that's that, that's that dollar dominance at the moment. It seems like dollar is strong everywhere. Throughout all the Commonwealth, minus England, of course. And uh, the Euro is falling down. And the Swiss is losing value against it. And the Canadian is. It's like, wow. There is this push right now to buy dollars. I guess it's the inflation thing. They're assuming that if global inflation is here, which it is, of course, and you and people are paying, paying to own, or pay, people are paying interest instead of getting interest from their bonds. I guess the logic is is that uh, if you're going to have to do it, you might as well do it in the American bonds, you know. Which again. Is it, it's more like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So money comes in, and the next thing you know, they're buying dollars, and the dollar is going up in value, and at the same time, people are getting interest on their money. So I know it's you know we're looking at 6.2 percent inflation. There is some linear projections out to 10 percent inflation going into next year. I don't know how. I mean, it, it you know, they're, they're, the politics at this point in time is the most insane I've ever seen. But I think that's going to come to an end, and we're going to have the adults back in the house after four years of Mr. Trump, which was supposedly he was mean. He was mean. He tweeted mean things. I mean, we got. I mean, Joe Biden was at the faux pas yesterday. Something about what do they call them? If I show, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say the words. I'm just gonna show you. See if I can find the picture. The picture was insane. Uh, what he said. He was speaking live, and he he said something that you, you just scratch your head at. Why the media is not demanding for his resignation right now is beyond me. I'm, I'm really confused about it. I mean, I know why because they're all leftists. So as far as they're concerned, it's okay. He can say those things. But it's one of the weirder things I've seen him say. Uh, we'll find it in a second. Um, something about... Uh, let me repost it again and it'll pop right up. Let's see right there. There it is. I'm going to repost this and then it'll pop up on my wall. And you'll see it. I don't. I want to. I don't want to. I mean, I have no problem saying it out loud. I don't want to freak out the YouTube. So you know, you, you know how YouTube is. YouTube's kind of crazy like that. But there it is, right there. We're gonna bring it up on the board here. Biden refers to famous picture as. I'm not gonna say the words. Obama signed a law banning government from using that word. I mean, he's a he's a wacko. Look what he called him. It's like, what's Biden in a time warp? Is this 1945, 1950, or what? What is wrong with this guy? I mean, he just makes no sense whatsoever, but that's what he said. <laughs> There's videos all over the place about it. The media is not saying a word about it. But that's the insanity. And just because Mr. Trump was uh, a mean tweeter, he had no other way of communicating. That's the weird part when they say that. It's like the media wouldn't cover anything he was doing. So what else is he supposed to do but, you know, try to get his point across? Since the media is hiding everything he says all the time. 
All right. Yeah, so there you go. I hope that the Aussie helped you out there. And that statement by Crazy Boy, our uh, illustrious, fearless leader, Joe B. I guess he's a rapper now because he's allowed to say that stuff. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. So let's jump over to let's see, back to the metals complex, I guess. That's the logic, right? Unless anybody wants to see another currency. What's that? D d dementia. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> isn't that the truth? I mean, no, isn't that crazy? Middle age. If it was, can you imagine if Trump had said something like that? They would have impeached him again, and they would have been begging every network every day would have said that he has to resign. He has to resign. But instead, when someone like Biden says it, no one cares. Media says nothing. You know, just us sane people out here to so see it, and we go, wow, this is really weird. All right. Uh, we're going to jump over to the metals complex, but anybody that wants to see another currency, just shout it out. You know, shout it out like the way Biden does. <laughs> Anything, you know. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is uh, silver. You can see there's some little pressure on it. Nothing major. Looks like it's going to hold up very well in here, and it's good, clean, long, strong strength here in the weekly. And then let's put it over on the uh, J4X. Yeah, Biden, he was a character. Oh, my God. It's like Alice in Wonderland. Lewis Carroll, the mathematician. Has, uh, there was this mathematician called Lewis Carroll wrote a Alice in Wonderland. Looking, looking through the... Or going through the looking glass, something like that. He was a mathematician. All right, there is... Silver, you can see it in the weekly, it looks very firm. Let's look at it in the daily. Same thing, even with it down a little bit today. You can see all the green. We don't even have a red dot there, so that's pretty cool. You see here on J4X, it's just cruising along and it's green. So, Dementia Joe. I think we call him Joe B, like as if he's some type of rapper. Hey, Joe B, what's up? Because he's going to use those words. You've got to be a rapper to do those words. It's got to be a brother. It's not legal for a, uh, uh, a Joe Biden to use those words. Obama signed that law. All right. Uh, let's see. From the, from the uh, silver, let's take a peek at the platinum. See what they're doing. Whoa. Too big. Let's take a look and see what platinum looks like here going into the Friday. There it is there, January Platinum. Eh, moving down, lots of red dots. This thing is really wacky. Daily sell from here, and it's going $50 up in the wrong direction from it. And we're in a weekly buy at the same time. So, uh, it's a, but, but, you know, you can't, you can't be long, and you can't be short. It's a neutral. So Doc's Math has kept you out of this move. Because this math here is keeping you out of that move. So, you know, it goes into the sell here, but we're in a weekly buy, so you can't take the short. So you're sitting there watching it. Three days it's going sideways to nowhere. Then all of a sudden they gap it up a little bit to the 50 area coming into this week. It runs to the 11, and it goes up almost $50 from that action. And you're still sitting there going, okay, I can't be long, I can't be short, I'm just neutral. Now, obviously, if you're a producer, it's a whole different situation, but. You know, as a trader, you have to sit back and just let it be. Now let's check out copper. And there's the copper. Now looking kind of firm. Dancing along the uh, cell line here. It's uh, trying to go into the weekly cell. We'll see how that plays out. This is so tight. We'll see what they do with this in the end. I mean, if it pushes it up into here, might stay in the weekly buy. Matter of fact, right now it is. I think you see the green line. Plot one is a plus now, so it's Z point ZZ two seven. So we are we can actually remove the little circley thing at the moment. 
because it's in the plus. All right, so there are the four metals, and we've seen the gold. You know, the gold is just cruising along also. Nothing major. Really do think we're going to see the 19s in that thing. I mean, you're talking about people are putting projections out there to 10% in inflation over the next year. We're at 6.2 now. Wow. You know, I mean, how do they not let this gold at least get back up to, I don't know, 19 and a half? What's the all-time high? Isn't it like 20-something? Let's take a look at it on J4X. I think the all-time high is like $21 and something. So, yeah, I mean, there it is like up in there. So, I mean, how can they not let this thing at least take out that high there between 19 and 1950? That's what I'm thinking. It's got to be able to be allowed to go up there. The central banks can't keep on blocking it, you know? That's what I'm thinking. All right, now let's take a look at the energy sector. There is December crude. You see it's been a little weak. We pointed that out when we were looking at the Canadian. It's going into the weekly sell there. You can see we have a client now paying attention to June. So we can show you a nice June contract without working too hard at it. Well, that's been in a weekly sell for two weeks. And, uh, you know, did it here. And then it squeezed them. And I guess it went into the buy right there. And it went right back into the sell. So whatever you lost right there, you're making you're making uh, a little, I guess you're making it all back right there. Because, you know, it went from, uh, what is that, uh, 74.62 down to a load of 73.38. So it dropped about a buck and, uh, just a buck and, buck and a quarter, buck and a half area. So not too bad. And it looks like we'll easily close in a weekly sell and a daily sell. Who knows what pressure might come. Maybe it'll challenge the slow here in the June's contract. Then let's check out uh, natural gas right there. And we've seen where I was mentioning it yesterday. Natural gas in uh, Europe is down 50%, which is really nice. I'm thinking about adding more March 550 corn calls. What do you think, Doc? You know, I, I, do you remember me talking about... Um, I guess it's a couple of weeks ago now. Um, you know, Robin and I were convinced that that the, there's there's less inventory, and the news came out that there is. But you know, I'm convinced that everybody has sold their corn. I'm convinced everybody sold their wheat, and I'm not sure what's going on with the soybeans. But you know, because it's in a weekly sell, let's just show you on the fact check spreadsheet. So we're seven weeks in a buy. Oops, we're seven weeks in a buy in corn, which is going to be eight. And same thing with, uh, let's get rid of that. It's easy to see right there. And then we're six weeks in wheat. And it looks like everybody's, they're out of crop. That's what it looks like to me. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it looks like it wants to make that move. And then you can see 12 weeks in the cell for soybeans. And I think we, uh, let me just show you the chart we put up on that. I think we posted that in the beginning of the week. But, um, let's see, where is it at? Is it here? Right there. Uh, right here. Where is it at? Um, coin, uh, bean corn plex. Could be that. I think that's what it is. Yeah. All right, so let's bring this down. Is that right there? That's it, right there. So, so you see there, uh, it's doing so, oh, I see, yeah. So you can see beans, so, no, wait, this is beans and meal. No, that's not it. We put it up there, too. I got it somewhere around here. Uh, I know where, I can open it up instead. Let me just open it up instead. Show it to you live. Right there. I, I think the crops have been sold, and I think that's what the pressure is. Now, you can see here, here's the beans. You know, beans went into a cell up in here, and at the same time, uh, I think these guys were in, 
you know, went into a cell also. You know, so wheat, where's wheat? The, this is one's wheat, this one's corn, there's beans, you know. These are the three. And then they go into a weekly buy in uh, corn first right there. And you can see it lifts nicely as beans drop. And then you can see next week wheat joins in. I really think there's a lot of trap money in the $7 area. I said to Robin, I think we're going to see at least 8 and a half in, in wheat. And uh, sure enough, that was back here I was saying it. When I went into the weekly buy, I said to them, I think they just want to run this thing. And so you can see here are suey beans, which you can trade on uh, uh, J4X. Let's put the suey beans up on there. Right there. You know, you can see that it is up for the week. And they all are up for the week, you know. Uh, but that doesn't surprise me any. I, I think that they're they're starved for inventory. Yeah, uh, we put it out on bar chart, and I really, you know, I, I you know, I, I, you know, oats are like that too. I think oats are up in the eight dollar area. So how can you not want to be long, you know, corn? open that up right there All right should open up okay here we go so here's oats I want to show you the oats deck oats are over eight dollars we had clients that were telling us when it was at four dollars never get past four dollars it's gonna die there it's like it's in a weekly buy. Don't, don't, you know, don't bet against the math. Yeah, look at this. The high no more than a week and a half ago was 760 in December oats. We're, we're bouncing between 750 and $7. I mean, you know, that's, you know, if these things can be, no, that's like, you know, everybody was telling us, oh, you know, we call, you know, the math picked up the oats taking off before picked it up on it again. I mean, they're in a weekly buy now for, I don't know, since back in September, is it? Yeah. I mean, you know, and it, it went from the $5 area. Is it $5 area? Yeah. It was $5 and change. Five nineteen was the low. You know, it's gone from there to seven and a half. I mean, you know, there it is. There's uh, seven seventy six to be exact. Went up to seven seventy five from five twenty. Uh, how can anybody not want to own a little of the of the commodities, you know, the uh, grains and so forth? Really, I don't. I don't see how they, you know, you know. And if you're a producer, you would you would think they'd be buying some calls just to hedge themselves. They've sold the crops. I mean, everybody. You can see it everywhere we go. Everybody has, you know, rolled from beans to winter wheat. Or they've gone from corn to winter wheat, you know. So you got you know, and then we saw the ag report come out, and it was you know they're they're under, they weren't over. So everybody has sold their inventory, hoping that their crops come in. What if there's a, you know bad weather and it screws up some of the crops? You know, I mean we could see seven dollar corn or something like that again. Uh, going into the next like four months or something like that. Who knows? Anything's possible, especially March, you know. So yeah, middle age, I hear you. It's awful hard not to, and you would probably want to, you know, if nothing else, because of the time lag, you know, go with a binary or something like that. You know, buy, buy the lower call, sell the upper call. Hell, do it as a butterfly. Anything's possible. You, know, you might catch the whole fat of it. You know, doing it as a butterfly for almost nothing. I mean, what what can a butterfly really be going for now in this stuff? You know, just like two cents, three cents. You know, I mean, psh, when you're really playing for maybe a dollar. You know, three cents, ninety to make ninety-seven cents and only lose three cents. What is that? That's a like a ninety-something to one ratio, or uh, no, it's a little bit less than that, but still pretty darn hot. hot you know, to bet three cents to make ninety-seven cents. All right, uh, so yeah, I'm right there with you. I hear you. And the meal, let's see what the meal's doing. There's the March meal. It's 
going to close on a weekly buy. It hadn't been in a weekly buy since, I don't know when. August, late July. It was in a cell, and it's been in a cell from the uh, 360-ish area. And it fell down to the 310-ish area. And now we're back at the 340 area. So, yeah, I mean, it's awful hard to not want to own this stuff. Not counting the fact that it's denominated in dollars, and everybody seems to be reaching for dollars. So, I mean, you're, if you're long any of these commodities, you're basically long uh, the dollar if you're actually going to take delivery of it. Yeah, that's, that makes total sense there. You know, the dollar is just a you know a, a juggernaut at this point. I mean, wh what can anybody really do? You know, what can they really do? I, I don't know what they can do in, in this situation. We're looking at possible 10% inflation. We're at 6.2 right now. Most of the world is not paying any interest on bonds at all. They're, they're actually charging people who buy their bonds to pay interest to the government at the same time. And the only place that you can get uh, bonds that get have some type of return is in the United States. Yeah, we talked about that. That's the that's the that's the play. That's what we think too. We're the same way. You know, the the product is uh, screaming. Uh, that uh, that's the last place. Jono <laughs> says he missed. <laughs> Robin does that once, not all the time. He did that a couple of weeks ago, where he called me on a Saturday morning and said, "Where are the charts?" <laughs> Yanos, you're not alone. I'll tell you, in these markets, anything's possible anymore. You know, we're being run by a bunch of lunatics, you know. So, yeah, that doesn't surprise me that you got a little confused on the day. Yeah, Robin Robin called me at one point and said something like he thought it was Saturday. So then, like, two days later, he calls me on Saturday morning and says, well, where's the charts at? I said, it's Saturday. He goes, oh, I thought it was Friday. So on Wednesday he thought it was Saturday, and on Saturday he thought it was Friday. So don't you're not alone. A lot of us are feeling that way right now. When you have uh, people like this running the government and doing things, and everybody talking uh, strange stories and not making any sense, and you see gold trading barely moving, and they're projecting 10% inflation, and they can't, they can, they have to literally take a small atomic bomb to move gold up, honestly, and silver. I mean, you would think that that thing. You would think silver would be, with a 10% uh, projection of next year, uh, on, a, on an average, not an a, not the worst case scenario, but the average, they think inflation could be in the high nines, low tens. You would think that silver would be trading at like you know, $38, not 25 You would think gold would be trading at like 1975 to 2025 off $100, you know? You find that funny? Jan Janus is on the, the uh, on the uh, Skype, and he's uh, saying that he got confused on what day it is. I got mixed up. He says the days. I forgot like six times yesterday what day it was. <laughs> I, I think we've all been through that lately. I mean, the whole the whole financial system is uh, looking through the looking glass at this point. So, uh, what else we got to say about that? I'm trying to think. But when it comes to everything else, it's just kind of slow and steady. It looks like everything will close out very firm this week. You know, I don't see anything that's chasing me or making me feel like I'm concerned more than anything else. I guess we, we could we could make a drinking game. How many times can Biden say stupid things, you know? Well, what else do I got to say? I don't have too much more to say. We've looked at that. You can see on J4X the soybeans. So, yep, I'm right there with you as traders. 
All right, what else can we look at? Oh, let's look at the stock indices really quick because it actually has been a down week. So that's been kind of interesting in its own right. Close that. And here is the uh, NASDAQ. As you can see there, it's just up a little bit today, maybe 20, 30 points. But you can see we're in a daily sell, but we're not challenging the weekly whatsoever there. You can see that. And let's just throw it up on J4X real fast. Too. Then uh, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Same thing, it's you know showing some strength in there. Uh, and we're trying to climb back up, but again, not challenging the weekly whatsoever. Take a look at it on J4X there. Then uh, we jump over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average itself, the grand lady of them all, right there. And it's up again, but not breaking the daily yet. And what's interesting here is to see the weekly getting closer to the zero line. It's only 90 points off of it. If they sold this product out today, this thing could possibly sell and close in a weekly sell. The Dow Jones led the last sell-off about two months ago. That, that was interesting. And then, uh, and let's put it up on J4X right there. And then last but not least, we'll take a look at the Russell 2000. And there's the Russell 2000. And you can see it's trying to get back into its daily buy. It's curving, but we've been in a weekly buy in this thing since way back here. Matter of fact, it, when, when the Dow Jones went into the sell, uh, that, that went into a sell for like two weeks and just bottomed and lifted and then when you look at the let's see what is that that it went into the buy in 924 and you see here the Dow uh, 924 is like where's that 924 is like right here you know it went into the buy but it took a couple more weeks for this to get into a buy the Dow Jones Industrial Average and you can see there it's trying to dip down. You know, look at that. You can see it's just like everything else. ETF EWZ. Let's see if we can find that real quick and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, open workspace. There it is. EWZ. That's the uh, Brazilian Real, right? That's that fund of theirs. right there. And you can see here, uh, been in a weekly sell for a while now, all the way back to July. And it's gone from the 50, uh, $42 area, is that right? Uh, $41 area, all the way down to the uh, whoop, the low of, uh, what is that? There's the real low right there on the, on the 22nd of uh, October. The low was uh, 28.57, so it dropped uh, a is that about 25% drop from 41 to that? So it's a pretty tenacious drop. And you can see it's trying to fight its way into the buy here, but nothing too good. Uh, did it threw it into a daily buy here, and it goes right back into a sell there. And the last two days, it's been uh, pushing down. You can't really take these longs because of that. And the only thing you can do is take the shorts. So in this case here. You're short here and you're losing. You're losing. Doc's math is ouch. So, I don't know. We'll see what's going on there. I think they called for elections too, I think. I think that's how that's playing out. All right, traders. This is Doc from North America. Everybody have a safe and a smart weekend. And we will see you all on Monday. Same time, same channel. Happy trails to you until we meet again. That'll be TGIM. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. All right, Dukascopy traders and Chicago Quant traders and global traders, ta-ta for now.